The border between Oman and Yemen is a straight line of 294 kilometers. For almost 80% of the border between Egypt and Libya is also a straight line. Also one of the most prominent borders that can be seen on the map is the border between the United States and Canada. The direct border between the two countries is 3,600 kilometers long and four Canadian provinces along with five US states are located along it. But there is a big problem at the end of this border. If you look at the map, in the southern part of Vancouver, Canada, there is an area belonging to the United States of Washington, which calls such a border division. But why is it so? And what happened in the history of this region? Also, what are the problems that this region has created for the United States? Welcome to another video from the Geography Tour channel. Point Roberts, an area of Washington located at the southernmost tip of the Southern Peninsula which is part of the Greater Vancouver Metropolitan Area in British Columbia, Canada. Although Point Roberts is part of the United States, it is not physically connected to the United States and is surrounded by water on three sides and its only land route the rest of the United States is a 40 km journey through Canada. But in order to know how this area was created, we must explore its history. The first European explorers discovered this spot in 1791. Before the first exploration, this area was used as a fishing place by the Native American tribes, which made the Indians at times of the year used to catch grayling fish. They came to this area and lived there for a while. And when the Spanish explorer Francisco Eliza discovered this area, he named it Isla de Zabeda. At the same time, the British explorer George Vancouver went to that area to meet the Spanish explorers and named it as a tribute to his friend. Henry Roberts changed to Point Roberts. A first look at the map often gives the impression that Point Roberts was created through a mistaken survey of US territory, but this was not the case. In fact, after the occupation of the territory disputed by the United Kingdom and the United States called the Origin Territory, James Polk had been elected as the President of the United States. While his administration asserted that the title of the United States of America to the whole territory was indisputable, even though there was only one resident of the United States, the ex-British north of the Columbia Basin. So Polk and Secretary of State James Buchanan proposed that the boundary be established at 49 degrees in a straight line across Vancouver Island, with no commercial concessions granted to Britain south of this boundary, except for the ports on Vancouver Island. The British rejected the offer and so the United States withdrew it. On April 18, 1846, a notice was sent to London that the Congress of the United States had passed a joint resolution to abrogate the Treaty of 1827, which provided for joint occupation. The British envoy, Richard Peckenham, had already been advised that the last concession that could be accepted from America was to bend the boundary at 49 degrees around the tip of Vancouver Island. The British looked to Fort Victoria as the future center of their settlements on the coast and were willing to cede their territory on the mainland to retain Vancouver Island. In 1848, Lord Aberdeen, the British Secretary of State, proposed a territory extending the 49th parallel to the sea boundary, which would give the whole of Vancouver Island to England, which was concluded seven years later in 1855. The acceptance of the 49th parallel as the international boundary without knowing the exact effects caused the British government to later realize that the Point Roberts Peninsula would be a separate part of the United States. Therefore, the British Foreign Office ordered Captain James Prevost, the British Border Commissioner, to inform his American counterpart of the situation and request that Point Roberts be handed over to Britain because it would be a great inconvenience to the United States. So, when the United States Boundary Commission was unwilling Prevost was ordered to offer some compensation equivalent to a slight change of the boundary line on the main, which, however, was unaccepted. The Point Roberts remained part of the United States. Now, after the land remained in the territory of the United States during the gold rush of 1858 along the Fraser River, prospectors from Victoria for gold settled at Point Roberts. Their settlement was called Roberts Town and consisted of six log buildings with a store and saloon, but less than a year after the gold rush faded, these prospectors left the area. After that, Point Roberts became a military reserve so that no immigrants could make it their home. Of course, 
This place became a popular and useful hiding place for smugglers and renegades. But in the future, this region has created challenges for the United States, some of which caused the relationship with Canada to fade. In 1949, there was talk of Point Roberts succeeding from the United States and joining Canada as a regional development plan for the mainland was presented that would have made Point Roberts an international park or leased it to 99 years had suggested that this plan could never be implemented because America insisted on keeping Point Roberts. Another tension between the two countries occurred in 1973 when a drought caused wells to dry up and created tensions between the residents of Point Roberts in the United States and Canada because the Americans threatened to cut off water to Canadians and hung signs reading Canadians go home unless the Canadian Delta municipality agreed to supply water. Thus, an agreement signed on August 28, 1987, record the Point Roberts Water District to purchase raw water annually from the Greater Vancouver Water District and also the Delta Fire Department, upon request by the Point Roberts Fire Department, should help them voluntarily. Another important development is related to the 9-11 incident, as Roberts was greatly increased, leading to long delays for residents of the region at the border. Canada's border was also closed to non-essential travel in March 2020, due to the worsening COVID-19 pandemic in both countries and particularly in the United States. When a study found that Point Roberts lost 80% of its business and hundreds of seasonal residents as a result of the pandemic and border closures. For this reason, a temporary ferry was launched by the port of Billingham in August 2020 to connect Point Roberts to the mainland, first to Blaine and then to Billingham. After which the Canadian government waived its mandatory COVID testing requirements for Point Roberts residents in February 2021 following negotiations with Washington state and the border was fully opened to non-essential travel in August 2021, with temporary ferry service was also stopped in the same month. Next, there is an interesting fact about Point Roberts. In this area, children can attend classes from kindergarten to third grade in Point Roberts, and then they have to cross the Canadian border every day and go to Blaine by bus to continue their education. These students do not need to have a passport to attend school. Now, as a result, we met the interesting area of Point Roberts, which was created due to an accidental treaty between the United States and the Kingdom of Great Britain. And the United States has made many efforts to keep it in its territory throughout history, because it had benefits for it, especially during the Second World War, in which it deployed its forces. But this area had created problems for its people in the last century, because there are about 1,200 people living in Point Roberts, and the United States spends money to provide these people with life services. And also, historically, the border closures have created problems for Point Roberts, which even during the COVID-19 era caused 80% of local people to lose their jobs and income. In the end, if you liked today's video, like it and share it with your friends. And if you are interested in geography, subscribe to the Geography Tour channel. I'll see you in another video.